Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Oh, everybody's saying stuff, but not. <laughs> hmm, guess not. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> ah, Vikings have arrived. <laughs> ah, better watch out, Dave. <laughs> Coming after you. Mm. <clears throat> <laughs> Where's Jason? <laughs> this is my boyfriend. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Incognito time? <coughs> no. Just prepared. <laughs> Who are you and what have you done with Big Bear? <laughs> Who's that strange man? <laughs> Nordic Bear. There you go. <laughs> my Finnish friend. <laughs> Maybe that. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that don't count as dyeing your beard. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, suburban. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> Who is this man beside you? <laughs> uh, hey, JRC. Mm. You mess with the bull, you get the horn. <laughs> Oh, nice beard. Mm -hmm. Did you make it, Robin? No. Nope. No, it wasn't me. I mean, I probably could with a lot of effort and cussing. <laughs> Jason, you've done something different. A new shirt, maybe? Yeah, a new shirt. <laughs> That's it's a new it. shirt. We got it today at the Goodwill. <clears throat> Hi, Odin. <laughs> I could say something about the horns, but this is family friendly. Yes, it is family friendly. Oh, where's your axe? Who See, made it? See, Robin wouldn't let me bring out. What oil did I? I haven't given him any yet. Oh, LOL, really, Marie? <laughs> this is how we roll, Dutch. <laughs> we going Viking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, it's not Pratt Family. Nope. This came from... Pooper Scooper. Pooper Scooper's household. <laughs> I was fooled until the Georgia Barking Spider started. Then I was... <laughs> yep, that's Jason. <laughs> the Georgia Barking Spider. <laughs> now that's funny right there, huh? That's funny right there. I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. so... Go dogs, you. It was a building year. It's okay. For oh real. my goodness, boss. <laughs> this is how we roll. Uh, hey, little bee lady. Has to be super hot. It's a little warm. Little warm. Take that bull by the horns. <laughs> oh, if she only were. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're letting everybody pull out the K-Bar. See, that's... What See, to that's you? what I said. I was going to be like, oh, <laughs> we are spot up. It's <laughs> 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 really funny. Anyway, so we're waiting. And uh, hello. To those in the back row, you know who you are. So, I guess we're just going to let everybody else trink along in for a minute. Yeah, give them a few minutes. Yeah. Time for a big girl drink. Sup, Tommy? Are you hiding a surprise or just incognito? Neither one. This is his attire. This is my attire for tonight. I figured I would. Just go all 
Out. <laughs> what did I just drop into? <laughs> He done yeah. stabbed the disc. <laughs> We're mm. gonna do it. <laughs> so. Mm. Anyway, what's up? You good? Mm -hmm. Josh, what do you think? I don't even see him. I don't even see him in here. I know. Leave for him real. alone for five minutes and see what happens. I know, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's the truth. Jason sing opera. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <sighs> yeah, I stabbed it into his desk. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the Homestead Network is proud to bring to you the live stream champions of the world. I'm the big bear. She's the mama bear. And we are the big Bear Homestead. Mm, okay. Mm. Let's see. So. Okay, Ninja Two, this is your warning. Don't come in here with that mess, or I will ban you. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that message. Remove. <clears throat> and we'll go from there. And we'll go from there. Next time, you will be out of here. Okay. Scroll down. We're good. Alright. Um. Yes, we're banning Mama Cat. Ban them. I need this live today. Yep. You know the other thing you guys can do that I just thought about? Keep commenting. Yeah. Just keep commenting. <laughs> Just keep, just keep, keep commenting. Just keep doing what you're just doing. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. I'm good to go. Yep. Alrighty then. And give everybody a few more minutes to show up. Vikings didn't wear kilts. <laughs> Hashtag fake Viking. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Hey, Jordan, what's up? All right, before we get started, if we have any stupid comments, mm. keep in mind, we might not be completely family friendly in the chat tonight. So, get rid of that. Make sure that if there's any children watching, that they're not watching the yep. chat. Yep, we guys. can't we can't control what happens in the chat box. And Donna, Miss Donna, we will send you a message about that. Yeah, your nay. Um, come on, people. We're let's... probably not. We're probably not going to do that, guys. Yeah. Sitting here sniffing my peppermint oil. <laughs> Put down the bottle and pick up the wrench. So. It's okay, y'all just keep commenting. It'll pull it out of the stream. It's fine. All right, so how many of you guessed the oil for tonight? Which oil is it? It is warm. You can see he's already gotten out of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not even warm. Anybody, anybody, anybody. I know somebody that's watching in the background knows the answer. And she won, so she won one of them. So, but I'm not, I know she's not going to comment. Let's see. Yes, wild orange is great. Another one is bergamot. That has become my new favorite. Nope, not wild orange. Not clary sage. This is one we haven't done yet, guys. There it is. Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. <laughs> we are doing geranium. Good job, Anita. And Brandy. 
I failed. <laughs> Poor Mama Cat. She sent me a couple of messages, <coughs> and she's like, I just can't get it. I just, I feel so dumb. Tommy, you still in here? If you're still in here, go ahead and give me a count, please, because I need to rent you. Let's see. Frank's Red Hot Oil, no. <laughs> I'm happy I got on. Good to see you, Maniac Grammy's Homestead. Capsaicin. No, nope, not capsaicin. We're doing geranium. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so let's talk just a little bit about it. You know, I like to always get some things out before we even start talking, you know, um, I don't want to say logistics, but we don't, before we start talking protocol and things like that, um, the very first thing I want to mention. Go ahead and refresh, Tommy. Is that geranium can be used all three ways. It can be used topically. It can be used aromatically. And you can ingest it. Um, <coughs> the topically, uh, you want to be a little careful with this one because some people can be sensitive to it. You definitely don't want to use it on young children, um, like six, seven, and under, um, because their skin is still really thin, and so it can cause an irritation. So you want to be really careful, and also toxicity because it's so power. It can, because the skin is so thin, it can be a lot more powerful. So you have to be really careful about that. Hello, Cherry, Cherry Crosland. Cool. Um, okay, so. After saying all that, um, let's talk about side effects and um, come on, focus. Uh, okay, so the contraindications and side effects. Okay, first things first. Pregnant women, no pregnant women. Um, oh, okay. You know what? That's fine, Ginger. Let me go ahead and do that first. Okay, so the very first tent was a picture of the Egyptian. Um, pyramids and the second one was a picture of St. Basil's in Russia um, both Russia and Egypt um, are known producers of geranium and we'll cover that a little bit more in a little while um, the other picture was a picture of Ladessa holding her nose and it's stinky and the reason for that is that this, um, this oil is kind of, <sighs> some people say that it's the poor man's rose oil because rose oil is extremely expensive, but that it has some of the same tones as, um, floral tones as rose. If I keep that in mind when I'm smelling it, it does kind of smell like a really strong rose petal, but I don't know. What do you think? It's very, very potent. Like the smell is um, really, really strong. So it's, oh, hey there, my mobile homestead. Um, what? What? Dave is here from living on a Die. Oh, that's Dave? That's Dave. Oh, cool. What's up, Dave? What's up, Dave? I was wondering who that was. Um, Mr. Miyagi moment. <laughs> Focus. Okay. So, all right. So, those were my... Um, Hello, Dolores. Those were my clues. Um, sometimes they're going to be far-fetched. Like, you know, I had one person that was great said that... I think it was Anita. She said that... Um, there were five clusters in the um, in the flower, and that those five clusters were the clusters on St. Basil's, whatever. So, it's whatever, you know. But, um, basically, we were just having fun with the clues this time. Because the thing is, is that those two things, um, the, the trying, I mean, the pyramids and the basilica or the cathedral i'm sorry the cathedral you know it's just one of those things where i wanted to kind of pick something you know that was a little bit you know you kind of had to think a little bit and find find out some origins and things like that so um all right 
So now let's go on to contraindications and side effects. Um, first things first, pregnant, pregnant women, you really want to kind of stay away from this. Um, even though they have, um, even though it, it does have some effects that would be good for pregnant women, like calming and things, soothing and things like that. Um, the, the thing is, is that it's antispasmodic. So it could stop the uterus from contracting. Um, so you don't want that to happen because while a woman is pregnant, her uterus is starting to contract to be able to grow to have the baby. So you want to be really careful of that. Um, the other thing is if you have heart disease or, don't engage. or you're prone to heart disease, you want to kind of stay away from this. Um, if you have high blood pressure, you also want to stay away. Um, another thing is keep in mind that this oil is a diuretic. So you don't want to um, use the oil and then also use something else that would be a diuretic because you could suffer from dehydration. So you just want to be, you know, you just want to be careful with that. Um, and like I've said before with all the other oils, um, you, any of these effects that this oil has, you want to make sure that you don't double up. So if you take a pill that does this effect and you use the oil, you don't want to do that. So, you know, you got to be really careful uh, when you're using an oil. You don't want it to be the exact, you know, two of the same thing. Um, all right. Another thing, this is good for skincare. A lot of people will put geranium oil in their, um, like their lotions or stuff to put on their face or on their soaps or whatever. But you have to be careful because you don't want to get this really close to your eyes because it will burn, you know, it'll cause your eyes to get irritated. Um, and I know I've said this before, but I'll say it again. If you end up getting oil anywhere near your eye and it starts to, um, water starts to run or it starts to get really irritated, you can take any kind of oil, whether it's cooking oil, coconut oil, whatever, and put it right along your eye and it will actually pull the oil out of your eyes so you don't have to worry about it burning anymore. Um, so if you take a water pill, don't use this oil or it's not going to be pretty. Exactly. <laughs> um, and also, like I said, don't use with children um, because of them having thin skin. You can have an issue with toxicity. So, um, let's see. Now, welcome, big family. As far as where this is, how it's extracted, all that stuff. Let's talk about that. Can you use geranium petals? Hold on, we're gonna talk about that. This oil is originally native to South Africa. Okay, um, <laughs> there, it used to just be South Africa. Now the major producers are Egypt, Russia, and a small province named um, Reunion. Mm. Um, they all produce different types of, um, like different varieties of the geranium. There are several different types. Um, so you kind of have to be careful and pay attention to which ones you're getting because some are not as potent as others. Um, the other thing is that this is steam distilled. So they use the entire plant. They use the leaves, the stems, the flowers, the whole thing, put it in there and they steam distill it to extract the oils out of the entire plant. Um, it's a perennial shrub. It can get up to about three feet tall. It has really pretty pink or white flowers. Um, also, what? You know what we didn't do? What didn't you do? We got so distracted. We let somebody throw us off our routine, and we should be ashamed of ourselves. <laughs> well, I said it could be ingested. <laughs> and it is didn't... time. <laughs> time, I say. It is time to do it. <laughs> Uh, I'm not even, I know you guys will share. It is time. Here we go. <laughs> okay, remember I said you could ingest this, right? I'm just saying. Here we go. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <sighs> 
Too late. Oh. Yeah, I knew we did it. Mmm. <laughs> Y'all missed it. We did the intro. Mm hmm. Ah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> what does it taste like? Oh. Barf time? <laughs> uh. I mean, imagine just chewing up a geranium plant. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but I didn't say it tasted good. That's exactly uh. right. <laughs> history because this was kind of interesting um it tasted like all the history was in that daggum bottle is it worse than the clary sage <clears throat> did i taste the clary sage i think so i don't remember what the clary sage tastes like so yeah it has to be okay so let's talk history um egyptian egyptians used it yeah, birch beer tastes a lot better to um uh -oh, the camera shifted up Oh no, mm. we'll check to make sure it works. There we go. How about that? That's much better. Am I at two thirds? Probably not. <laughs> okay, Viking not scared of little bottles. <laughs> okay, mm. so, um, Egyptians used it to treat tumors. Um, geranium was brought to Europe in the 17th century and it became popular during the Victorian area. Um, is he gonna get the walking trots? <laughs> <laughs> that, it, it got in my mouth. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing, guys. This is oil, right? So, like, all of the liquid that he's putting in there is not really helping because all it's doing is just, you know, sloshing it around. Um, okay, so it was popular in the Victorian area or era. I'm sorry. Oh, that helped out a lot. Flowers, yeah, because it dissolved it and spread it, yeah. Oh. Um, so... <laughs> yes, just me. <laughs> um, so, are you done? No, that I'm stuff not. is nasty. <laughs> okay. Flowers, what they used to do in the Victorian era is they used to take the um, flowers and they would place them at the dining tables. Um, and they would also uh, put the petals and some of the... Uh, <laughs> honey. Honey. Yep. They they would also put the petty or the petals into um, the a bowl for a finger bowl, so that they could um, so they could use it for antibacterial purposes. Um, the the other thing um, is that Greeks used it. They used it to um, help with cuts and broken bones um, because this does promote cellular growth. Uh, North Americans actually drank tea uh, made from the powdered roots and it was used, they used it to um, combat dysentery and also to speed up recovery from cuts and wounds. So, <laughs> I'm not drinking oils for you. <laughs> okay, so. That one was, that had to be the nastiest one. Well, okay, ever. so guys, the thing is, is, when we start talking about ingesting these, a lot of times people use these in vegetable capsules. They'll buy capsules, or even some people will take capsules from, like, yeah. vitamins and things like that, and they'll dump out where the what the vitamin or whatever was in, and they'll put it in there, and then they'll, um, they'll, they'll use that vegetable capsule so they don't actually... Get it on their tongue. So had to put some lime in there. <laughs> put the lime on the coconut. There you go. Um, okay. So as far as properties go, 
Um, this is an astringent, which means it contracts body tissue. It's also hemostatic, meaning that it causes bleeding to stop. It has these properties, so it's, it's you know, they, it's capable of stopping bleeding. Um, it's a... No, that was lime, professor. <laughs> It's a cicatrizant, which a encourages forming of scar tissue. So it'll it'll start to, um, like if you have a wound, that's why, um, <laughs> that's why you would put that on a wound because it'll help to uh, grow that scab. Um, the other thing is it's cytophylactic, which increases cellular activity. I wrote these all down so that you would know what they were. It increases cellular activity so that it'll, <laughs> you promote cellular growth. Um, it's also diuretic, like I said before, um, which means that it causes an increase of passing urine. Um, <laughs> I think Jason's face is hemostatic. <laughs> look at me and let me see. You look fine. He's fine, guys. Um, can you put it on a bleeding cut? Yes, you can. And... It's a good idea to put it on a bleeding cut because it will actually, the, um, one of the products, I mean, one of the properties is it's uh, styptic, which means that it will actually stop bleeding when it's applied to an open wound. Oh, then let, let's cut my, let me cut myself no. right here and put it on. Let's no. see if it works. No. Another thing is this is as good as a deodorant because it's a circulatory um, oil, meaning that um, it will pass out through your sweat glands so tomorrow so, i'm gonna smell like a bush right so you can um you know put it on your skin and as it's as you sweat you know <coughs> it comes out through <laughs> put the beard back on um it, it'll come out through your sweat and i've actually had that personally happen to, to me and also to jason as well because we use this a lot for his nerve pain so there's a lot of times where he has that kind of flowery nice spell yes you can put it on a burn as well anything skin um, oriented guys, you can pretty much count on geranium to help, um, psoriasis, eczema, um, things like that. All right. <laughs> What'd you say? Danny, he's fine. No worries. Wait, that's what they told Custer. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, that means you may have a third ear when you get up in the morning. <laughs> you have cover for hunting. Uh, okay. So, um... Another if that was only true, Sherry, because we need more we need more bees. We do need more meat more, more bees. Will it come out in your tubes? <laughs> I don't know how that does anyone Okay. Um <laughs> Okay, stop. So <laughs> tonic. It's also tonic, meaning that it increases to restore muscular tone. Um and also other things as well. Um it's also a vermifuge, which means <laughs> Which means that it'll destroy or expel parasites. That's another good one as well. Ah, so if I got worms right now. You're in good shape. Yep, you're good. Gone. You're good. Gone. See, that, I'm betting that's what it is. Y'all, I'm not really fat. I just got a big freaking tapeworm. Really? Is that what you think it is? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jason's toots will be flowery. I'll <laughs> actually smell like roses for once. Amanda said, can I give it to the hubs? Huh. Um, range of motion pain, I, I would think so because it is anti-inflammatory. Um, Homestead Mommy, you're in here. What do you say of that? I would think that it would, it, the nerve pain, it does help with the nerve pain with Jason. So if it is a nerve pain issue, then yes. As far as range of motion, if it's anti, if it's an inflammation, this would definitely, um, be an oil to try for that. And remember, guys, you know, one oil might work for one person and not work for another. That's the beauty of these oils is, is that, you know, there may be an oil that you can't use because of some certain um, health issue or whatever, but there might be three or four more that have the same properties that you can use instead. And that's one of the things that we really like um, is because... Hey, man, Tanya. Yes, it can help with arthritis. Um... Does it help when cleaning house? It can. It smells good. It's antibacterial. So absolutely, why not try it? You know, add a little bit of lemon in there and make it smell nice. Because geranium will go with anything. He um, might. 
<laughs> Does your tapeworm have a Viking? He hat might. Too? <laughs> he might even have a Viking boat in that in my belly. And okay. like. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, now. That's what I can do with that ram horn. How much do you use for parasites internally? You know, um, Mima, we have not used. Yeah, it could be helpful for pain. Um, as far as parasites go, I have not used geranium for parasites. Um, I was surprised to hear this on this particular. I knew that it was good for um, for just bugs in general. It's like it's an insect repellent, but I didn't really know that it was good for parasites. Um, I know that when we use um, oregano, it's a drop for three days. Um, mm -hmm. Fibromyalgia, yeah, um, I think it would be something you could try. Um, what? Oh, I'm just thinking, you're saying parasites, and I'm, I'm thinking about the individuals in the back row. Uh -huh. I'm also thinking about, I wonder if it works on teenagers. They're parasites. Oh, yeah, sucky guy. Especially, dry. especially <laughs> when they turn 17, because you don't even get <laughs> They can't even get the ice printed anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's talk about body systems now. Now, this was really encouraging when I started doing all the research on all the different studies and stuff that they're, um, they're starting to do. And remember, guys, a lot of these oils, they don't do studies in, in America like they do all over the rest of the world. Um, they're starting to do studies at different hospitals here in the States, um, but they're very few and far between. But over in other countries, they, I mean, they're studying them constantly because they're looking for alternatives that are natural alternatives to be able to help people to actually get better, not to make money off of them because of, you know, right. that other stuff. So, um, all right. So let's talk about the brain first. Yes, oregano does work great, great for, for parasites. parasites. We've been... Especially tapeworm. Mm -hmm. Because, see... Um, um, in your livestock and in your cat and dog. Well, well I, I don't I'm know just, about cat. We don't know about a cat, but yeah. Apollo got tapeworm because how they get tapeworm is they can, they'll eat a flea and he'll have that parasite in him and then that's how they get inside the dog. Mm -hmm. um, so, Apollo is on trifecta. Tri trifexis. Trifexis. Something. Because that does this heartworm and it Tonight's kills... And it kills fleas. Mm -hmm. But it also helps with parasitic uh, intestinal worms, but it will not do tapeworm. Right. And Apollo got the tapeworm. And so when we went, because Apollo has insurance, he went to the vet and they said, look, you know, that's... That's Ta expensive. Tapeworm is real expensive. Uh -huh. and, I, and they knew, they knew we used essential oils because yeah. when he went in for his, <laughs> his first... Initial check up they were like your dog is parasite free time is good for parasites too and okay. I, and they said well can you tell us who his vet was and what medication he was on because right. you know he's he has no signs of no parasites i said you're the first vet he's ever seen mm -hmm. and they were like shut the front door yeah and i was like no for real and they're like well what are you well, doing normally we see a residual of some kind of parasite yeah. i know? said well we use essential oils and his doc went oh mm. So she literally told us, she's like, um, I saw it, Anita. I'm just trying not to be rude to Jason. Um, we, uh, she said, um, look, it's expensive to try to do the tapeworm. You can Go try. home and try your try oils. Try your protocol and then. But just stay up on it. And, you know, if we need to, we'll kick this in, into effect. Right. We came home, we did the oregano one time. He had like three or four days where it was like nothing but dead. Yeah. worms coming out and you do it for three days and then you wait a week and then you wait a week and do it again for three days and then and you should be good blammo. yeah no more tape um okay so nifty was asking for pain how to apply to use it with carrier oil or apply you can try to apply it neat um but like i've always said i would do either a patch test or go ahead and just use a carrier oil and the reason I recommend using a carrier oil is because it allows you to apply it to a bigger amount of surface. So, you know, if you have one drop and it gets like one square inch, you know, you add it to a carrier oil and you definitely spread that out a little bit more. Lush um, life, you missed the Viking. Let's see. Is the active ingredient you can buy at a famous big pet store? Yeah. 
Is D one okay? Probably. Um, ask questions in Akia. Okay. All right. So, um, so let's talk about the brain. Um, as far as the brain goes, this I was really excited about because um, this is something that Jason and I have both fought um, with our parents, grandparents, um, and so it kind of has a a place in both of our hearts that um, for part or not Parkinson's for um, dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, there's been studies about geranium helping because um, it's, I guess the way that they explain it is that it's micro, microglial, um, and yeah, and yeah, for massaging, yeah, definitely. And see, but sometimes we don't massage. We just apply it straight on there and allow it to do it. See, it's, see, it's Homestead work. Mama, she, she, <laughs> this is what she does when I'm having pain. She'll 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 say, she'll do it all nice and sweet. She's like, all right, baby, just go on, <laughs> lay down. I'll get the oils, and mm -hmm. then she puts it in her hand, and she's like, bam! I know, I and I'm know. like, ah! She's like, suck it up, Marine, and she rubs it on me real quick, and she's like, now go to bed. And I'm like, when is it supposed to be a massage? She's like, shut up, go to bed. Okay, Mama Cat. As far as the book goes, I use a couple different books. Um, but this right here is my notebook that I just write all my notes in. So it's a little bit above. Donna Norris says, how do you apply for nerve, nerve pain? Nerve pain, at apply the at the site, yes. Um, topically at the site. And again, the carrier oil is good for massaging because you're able to spread it out more. It, it goes further and you're able to kind of, you know, um, cover more area is basically the best way to put that. Mama Gaddy, if you're asking, this is her notebook. This is... All the notes that she writes down for each class. Yeah. I've got, yeah. So, all right. Um, so, as far as the brain goes, um, microglial, um, there are cells that are found in the brain and the spinal cord. And what they do is they act as the first and the main form of um, the defense for your immune system. Um, so, and, or not your immune system, your central nervous system is what I'm okay. saying. <laughs> Um, and so the thing is, is that what happens is, is it fights mm -hmm. against all of the neurodegenerative stuff that the disease like Alzheimer's and dementia that can go on inside the brain. And so this is like a preventative. Um, who are you calling a degenerate? No, I said degenerative. You looked at me and said, you looked at me and called me a degenerate. <laughs> and so it activates things like nitric oxide that, um, the... It combats um, the inflammation that's in the neural pathways that cause degeneration. So, um, it also has been used uh, to help with um, uh, autism support. Uh, it promotes chemical balance inside the brain. It also can help with seizures and vertigo. Um, Parkinson's as well. That's another one. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. There was something I was going to say, but that's okay. Um, all right. As far as the heart goes, the heart's another one. Um, we talked about it being hemostatic. So, oh, Donna, I saw that. Um, Donna asked about, um, you can use it, diffuse it. Um, you can also, as far as dementia goes, you can diffuse it. You can also, um, just tent it. So put a little bit in your hand, smell it, good to go. Um, the other thing is you can, um, you can apply it as well. I mean, you know, it's, your skin is the biggest organ in your body. So it's going to allow, and remember we talked about before the reason, one of the reasons why um, essential oils are so effective is because they're able to, they're so small. Um, Don't worry about it, mama cat. Yeah, we just got keep it covered. commenting. We're good. Tommy, you still in here? The, um, the thing is, is that the essential oils are able to, pass through that um, blood brain barrier because of how small they are they're able to get through and 
be able <coughs> to go straight into your central nervous system and disperse and and all throughout your blood so that's why they're way more effective than um, pills and such because those you have to digest um, and have to process through you know other systems um, okay so as far as the heart goes we're talking about it being hemostatic um, and so what this does is it can help with stopping hemorrhaging or bleeding um, it speeds up uh, coagulation so and also because it's an astringent um, it helps it the, the blood vessels contract so it helps to stop um, to stop that bleeding um, open wounds it also helps with uh, blood vessel integrity so if you have blood vessels that are kind of collapsed or whatever this will actually help with that as well um, another thing is is it will detox blood it'll take the toxicity out of the blood um, helps with bruising also poor circulation numbness in your extremities um, even varicose veins um, another one that it's helped us with is bloody nose um, we've had uh, my, my son has had a bloody nose before and he would get them really bad and once we started using oils, we started looking, you know, what can we use for a bloody nose? And we definitely have used geranium, and it is very, very effective. Um, <laughs> very effective for bloody nose, at least for my son. It works really well for him. He used to just, like, almost gush. And we started using the geranium, and it works so much better. We're talking about geranium, Liam. Okay, let's move on to the digestive system. Um, as far as the digestive system, this is where it gets kind of fun. Um, they, <laughs> it that works, you are, brother, that you are. It works for poor digestion, <clears throat> gallbladder, gallstones, um, gas and bloating. It also works really well for jaundice. Again, you know, you're talking about toxicity and then the diuretic and things like that. You're, you're removing that, those toxins from the system. So, um, how long, how did you use it for a bloody nose? He just put it on the bridge of his nose. He took the oil straight. He didn't use a carrier oil or anything. And he put it right across the bridge of his nose. And he had to be really careful because, um, it, it was really like one of those things where you don't want to get it too close to your eyes. So that was the thing you had to be, you know, you just had to be careful. Um, but it worked really, 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 really well. So, all right, let's see. Um, as far as, you can't do that. Yes, I can. Okay. So as far as, um, the rest of the digestive system, we have liver, the liver, um, if you have low bile production, What's up, full spectrum? it'll help with that as well. Hey, full spectrum. Um, it also helps with liver congestion. So it helps, again, to flush out all of that yucky stuff. Um, pancreas, ulcers, all of that. So, um, let's see. Endocrine system. The endocrine system, is, of course, that's your... Um, Adrenal glands, how do you use it for gallstones? That would be internal. Um, you, I would recommend putting those in a vegetable cap because it's definitely, um, does it burn <laughs> when I drink peppermint oil? Yeah, it would. It's very potent too. Um, <laughs> on the way in, I don't know about the way out. But um, you got to be, all joking aside, Tommy, <laughs> Peppermint is not one to play around with. You gotta be really careful with peppermint on your hands because if you rub it accidentally, put it on your eye, or if you, um, let's just say you go to the bathroom and you have to be really careful um, because that's not fun too. So, um, all right, let's see. Adrenal fatigue. Um, it's also good for hyperthyroid and it, it's also good for hypothyroid. Um, it's also, and this is another one, um, that I like is, um, 
hyper or uh, hypoglycemia, which is what I am. Um, I'm hypoglycemic, which is low glucose levels. Um, so this is another one that would work good. What about thyroid? Yes. So that's what I was just saying. There's a little bit of a delay there. Um, it's good for both hyper and hypothyroid. So, um, and in my opinion, you could do one of two things with that. You could either do ingest with that, but you could also put it, you know, close to where that is. And, and you could put, you know, maybe on your neck, um, yeah, peppermint is, gr yeah, it's kind of gross. <laughs> um, and it's really, really, it's, it's a, um, it'll, I don't want to say burn, but it's like, it's strong. Um, the help with sciatic nerve problem. I would think so. Um, I would place, yeah, I mean, and again, with the, um, carrier oil, I would put, you know, several, maybe three or four or five drops in with some carrier oil and um, that you know should work pretty well. Um, geranium's a good one. We use wintergreen as well. Um, ginger, all of these are really good. So, uh, okay. So next one would be immune system and of course um, antibacterial. There have been studies done on this with MRSA. Um, so definitely uh, a good powerful oil. It's good for cold sores, um, ringworm. There was even mention of scurvy when I was looking around. So, um, we're talking about geranium, green gables. Um, all right. And back to cellular health, we were talking about how, um, it promotes cellular growth. Um, this is good for inflammation. Um, in some of the studying that I saw, there was mention of radiation damage. Um, and burns, radiation burns on skin. Um, also, it's good for damaged things like your large intestines, liver, um, even women parts, um, skin, tongue, all of these different things. Um, so, any, any thoughts, thoughts on, on acne? Me? It absolutely will help with acne. I'm getting to the skin part, so... Um, I'll get there. I'm trying. As a matter of fact, <laughs> that's where I was going next. <laughs> um, Isn't just me friendly? I think so. I don't know if that was a friendly fire or something was said that I don't know. Susan, tell me why you banned him. Is it MRSA a staph infection? Um, I think they're a little bit different. I think it's a little bit different than a staph. A staph is staphylococcus, so I don't know. MRSA is a little bit. Hi there, I don't Why is it doing that? I don't know. Anyway, okay. Um, now, let's move on to the integumentary um, system. And that would be your hair, nail, um, and skin. So as far as hair goes, um, either dry or fragile hair, if you're having problems with growth of hair, um, those kind of things. Um, those, Susan! Those can work. Do not ban him. All right. Now. Let's see. I got a new aftershave. I call it either the cat. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. So, as far as nails go, um, for nails, you if you have nail fungus or split nails, this works okay with that as well. Um, you can apply it straight to the nail with just a little bit of carrier oil, um, and that works out pretty good. Um, all right. Uh, now, as far as skin goes, this is good for acne. It's good. Um, okay, so it is a, a form of staph. Staph aureus. Okay. Rebecca, we have some information on him um and he's not he's just not welcome here anymore he's been working with the trolls no matter what he says um so he's not he's not welcomed here anymore all right um as far as skin goes there's acne um it can be used as acne um and and as far as acne goes there's a there's a couple of different things that, that you can do with that um it's 
we've actually used a soap with tea tree oil in it that works really well too. So either one of these oils would be really good um, to to put into just regular, like you could do just in regular soap. You just put your soap in there and just a couple of different, um, just a couple of drops in there and, you know, work it into your lather and then wash on your face. Again, though, be very careful getting it close to your eyes because you don't want to get the oil in your eyes. And it will, you know, you got to be careful with water and oil not mixing. You don't want to splash. So when you're rinsing, you want to be really careful of that as well. Um, all right. Does it smell good? It's not my favorite smelling oil. Um, mm -hmm. It's like I was saying before, if you... You know, if, if you put it up to your nose and you're thinking about roses, it kind of smells like an overpowering rose petal smell. But if it just, if I just pass it in just in passing and I smell it, it's, it's not exactly my favorite smell. Um, how often, how would you use it for hair and nails and how often? Um, you can put, as far as for your hair, you could put it straight into your shampoo. Um that works fairly well with the um any anytime you're trying to put into your hair you can either massage straight into your scalp um with you know a lot of people don't want to put actual oil you know a bunch of oil in their hair so i would put it like in with your shampoo um or is it better smelling than patchouli mm, they're both kind of a little potent i know it tastes worse than patchouli <laughs> So you remember now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so definitely this oil, I mean like even cellulitis, um, poor circulation, cuts, wounds, dermatitis, eczema, psoriasis. If you have an inflammation, um, moles, oily skin, ringworms, scabs, scarring, um, even wrinkles. Um, I saw a couple of different recipes that um they used <laughs> no i won't <laughs> yeah that smell is kind of rough um but anyway you can take the i like the smell I, you know i would believe that tommy <laughs> i would believe he likes the smell of patchouli wouldn't you uh, i could see him liking patchouli oil no i don't understand where you're going with that well, he's like a rocker, and he he plays that. Look, it's that whole hippie mentality. I just kind of have this idea, like back in the day, he was hippie mentality. That's just the where I go with that. Tommy, um, I'm not responsible for her comments, <laughs> man. No, he just seems like a cool, mellow guy. I could see him liking patchouli. It's just one of those, um, you know. I it's just not my my favorite. Um, I do like. Uh, Lang Lang and a lot of people don't like that one so it just kind of depends on what you you know what you like um, alright so the other thing and this is where I get to kind of laugh a little it says that it would work on um, skin tags so maybe we should try that oh <laughs> mm -mm -mm. <laughs> try it. It doesn't say it's a hot oil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <sighs> okay. Um, <clears throat> so there's another section in one of my movies <laughs> upside down. I, it wasn't meant to be. I don't know why you're making it out to be like it's a bad thing. I don't know why you would think that. I'm not, I'm I love touching. Tommy. I think he's awesome. Man, I was this. I, look, Tommy, I don't know how many people you heard, you know, called you and talked to you after your show yesterday, but I have never been more excited on the other side of the screen. I was jumping up and down. You go, Tommy. Go, go. What not? Yep. Yep, I sure was. <laughs> um, Tim, we don't really need to worry about um, time because there's nobody after us. And I still have a little bit to share. So if you guys will bear with me, I'll be more than happy to finish it up. Um... Okay, so there's a section in one of my books that deals with addictions and different um, behavioral and mood things. So um, it said that geranium is a pleasant, supposed to be a pleasant smell. Um, so it's supposed to be really good for like anxiety, um, irritability, anger management. Um, it also mentioned 
Um, is there a good oil for anxiety disorders? There's a ton of them. Um, Southern Yankee Homestead, we're actually working on putting something together for you to send to you. So we're, we've got all we of got that We got you in, covered, brother. Yeah, we have all that in mind. Um, let's see. So um, emotionally wounded people, people who have feelings of worthlessness. Hmm. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. And... Another one that it mentioned was cutting. Um, the, you know, there's some people have problems with that, and so that this is an oil that's supposed to to help with that. I don't know anything personally about that, but some of the stuff that I looked at um, kind of mentioned that that might be a protocol that might be used for support with that. Uh, okay, now onto the nervous system, which we've already somewhat talked about. Um, neuropathy, neuralgia, um, anything of that nature works really, this oil works really well with neuralgia, which is the pain, nerve pain, um, and then neuropathy. Both of these, it works really, really, really well with, for Jason, we, we've definitely, we've used this oil time and time and time again, and we swap them up because we don't want his body to get used to one or the other. So, you know, one day it may be geranium and ginger, the other day it may be geranium and wintergreen, then it might be ginger and wintergreen and kind of go back and forth. Um, okay, hormonal imbalance. Yes, uh, clary sage is really good for that. Um, this oil is actually pretty good for that as well. Um, so that's another, you know, another thing to think of. Uh, she's a bottler. Um, you've got... Uh, Lang Lang works good for hormonal imbalance. There's a lot of them. And that's the thing I love about essential oils, guys. It's, you know, you have, um, you have so many different options with each oil that you don't have to just limit yourself to one. That's one thing that we really, really like about this is that we don't have to just have one oil for one thing. We can go, okay, well, let's try this. That didn't work. Let's try something else. And the other thing is, is that sometimes one of the properties of oil will work really well for you, but another property doesn't work as well. But you'll find another oil that does do that property. So that's the thing is like, that's why we absolutely love these is you don't have to worry about that. So, um, okay, now let's talk, well... Women, if you want to put, there's a lot of y'all women in here. You want to put your hands over your ears, that's fine. If not, no big deal. Oh boy. Um, men's health. So, we were talking about hair. So, obviously, if you got a problem up here and you're bald, and <laughs> it can help with that. Um, it can promote promote hair growth. But, of course. There you if, go, Josh. Um, another one is uh, empty hammock. There's, no, or there's not enough <laughs> oil on this planet. <laughs> For you, Barry. Really ridiculously good looking. <laughs> um, but rosemary is another one. There's a couple of different oils that promote hair growth. Um, also, imbalanced hormones. Um, you know, either one of those. Um, I mean, with imbalanced hormones, also infertility. Um, <laughs> Rock and Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, either one of those work, you need a shirt for that. <laughs> okay, so as far as men's health, that works out. Um, let's see. <laughs> no? Okay, so Revelation Living, now it's time for the men. Oh, wait, before I do that, let's go with the one more thing for um, guys and girls alike. Um, because this is a diuretic and it works really good, um to help with um, getting rid of toxins. Um, it works for kidney stones, uh, water retention. So if you have edema, um, this helps with that. Also, any kind of urinary infection, either one of those, um, it works, you know, it's fine. So, all right. Now, as far as women's health goes, um, just keep going. Let's just say that this oil is a woman's oil. It works good for um, any kind of tenderness you have. Any kind of, like, 
anything going on with your womenly stuff, um, if it's heavy or painful, um, if you're going through menopause, PMS, um, endometriosis, ovarian cysts, imbalanced hormones, again, so this is a, an oil that both man and woman can use. Um, and, well, you know, be a very, uh, if you mix oils, does it change their effect? What it can do is some, and this is actually one of them that can help multiply a little bit. That helps kind of bring on more of the potency of the other oils. So yes, sometimes it can change their effect. Um, it just depends on which oils. And that's a whole nother class. Yes, big family lady parts. Um, any lady parts. They, it helps with all of the lady parts. So it's a, it's a good one for... <laughs> it's a good one for men and women alike. Um, this is one that you can have in the house and, and go through it pretty quickly because both men and women can benefit from this oil very well. And in their own specific health, not, you know, not just in general like nerve pain, but this helps with men, men's health as well as women's health. Um, so that's pretty much what I got. Oh, no, no, there was something else that I forgot to talk about that. So, you know how I told you about how Jason, you know, had the oil earlier? So, there's some funny stuff that I, I read about this oil that it, it's good for. And um, it kind of had me <laughs> laughing a little bit. <laughs> Permissible mess. <laughs> Sorry, that was funny. Um, I don't really think that that's a good time to do that right yeah. now. Yeah. So, anyway, this, this oil is really good for just about every system that you can think of. Um, yes, it is good for UTIs, um, and I would ingest it, um, Leanne, I would put it in a vegetable capsule and use it that way, um, uh, let's see, I don't have any lady parts, well then, you're, you're but you're a drummer, <laughs> uh, <Doo -doo. laughs> but you know, empty hammock, though, you, you're a man, and you have man parts, and Works for man parts too, so that's all I'm gonna say. Oh, okay. So, all right, we're all thankful for that. <laughs> all right, so let's see. Um, would you recommend massage lower back or abdomen? Um, at Laura Lab, if it were me, um, what I use there's a couple of different things. There's a women's blend, um, but also just clary sage by itself, lang lang by itself, um, together, um, lavender. Um, and, and for me, I put it straight onto my lower abdomen. Um, as far as my lower back, I don't have as much pain on my lower back. So, but I do put it, um, I do put it across my lower abdomen and that seems to help a lot. Yeah. You can, you can, and, and you can, you can use it neat. Um, it definitely has a couple of, anal, you know, it doesn't say specifically that it's analgesic, but I would imagine that it does help a little bit with pain. Um, so... You know, just general pain because it, it's anti-inflammatory. So I would imagine it, it should help a good bit with that. Um, we have any more questions? So if I give it to husband, or will it work for me? Huh? I know I got my ear hurts. All right, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, clary sage works better for me too. And I'll tell you, um, one thing that I had with, with my experience was that it worked really well aromatically for me. I liked the way it smelled. So I used to put it on a diffuser necklace and just for smell. And, and it would calm me down. It was one of those smells that helped me to relax. And when I worked in um, my previous job and it was always go, 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 go. Um, I was able, yes, it does work for hot flashes. Um, and let's see, as far as like, um, with the diffuser necklace, it helped me to kind of relax. And, but what I found was a by, you know, a byproduct of that or an unintended, um, benefit was that it started to make my female monthly visitor not as difficult. Um, and then I did notice when I stopped using it, it, it kind of got a little worse. So, um, how, how uncomfortable can we make Jason? <sighs> What's good for athletes? But there's a couple of different things. Um, 
<laughs> this one, it, it does have some antiviral, I mean, uh, antifungal properties, but there's more that are even better. Like tea tree is really good. Um, what well, about car, car parts? parts. <laughs> <laughs> now that's pretty funny. <laughs> what about car parts? Um, let's see. As far as athlete's foot goes, I know that tea tree is good, but let's see what else. Um, cardamom and arbor vitae, which makes sense. Uh, let's see. My ear. I've got water in my ear, I think. Okay. All right. Anyway. All right, any more questions? It's about five after ten. Good to go. What's the email? Leah, we will send that to you via other ways to get contacted. You know what? No. no. Go ahead. I it is you. Big Bear Farms Oils at hotmail.com. Give it again, honey. Big Bear Farms Oils at hotmail.com. All right. What did she say? I don't know. What... Tim, that, that one called for. All right. Geranium, Dave, I'd use a motor car. Yeah. <laughs> what would be the best for liver problems? Um, anything that's going to be... Yeah, I mean, uh, geranium's good for that. Another thing that's really good is there's a detox blend. It has a lot of different stuff in it to help kind of, <laughs> 10W30 helps to work with that. Um, you can also use um, clove or rosemary. Um, let's see. What? Oh, I was like, what are you doing? All right. Okay, a hey, uh, Lorelai. Refresh, Devil Dog. You got a wrench. All right. Anyway, go for green. Came in late, but that's okay. Go for green. Seven five. Go Thank for you green. You owe me twenty five push-ups. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Now it's my turn to talk. Um, uh, kudos, kudos to the ninja dude. Good job, good job. Um, yeah, but, Leanne, just get with me, we'll figure it out. But I'll get that figured out by next time next I time. go live, too. So, kudos, well, kudos to everybody in the chat room that just ignores them. Yep, and uh. Here's the thing, guys. You know, I came on a couple of times and I tried to talk to y'all. Let y'all come in. We talked. We talked about trapping. We homesteading. Homesteading. And you know what? I don't know if you guys were taking it serious or if you were taking it and, and just trying to make jokes in your little chat rooms. Or whatever. Personally, I don't give a rat's patoot. Mm -hmm. But this class, the, this oils class, is here to help people. It's here to help people that their medication's just not working anymore. This class is here to help people like your mother and your father and people in your family that their medication just might not be working. Or 
the doctors looked at him and said, look, this is just chronic pain. There's nothing we can really do. And that is a bunch of BS. Or you've got somebody with cancer who's going through chemo treatment and they're getting sick from it and they need something that's going to make them not feel nauseous all the time. There's all different types of oils out there for that stuff. Yeah. So you coming in here trying to disrupt and throw your agenda out there because you want to attack one of my friends and then you want to start attacking friends of friends and you want to try to start attacking my weight. Well, Ninja Guy, I hope you're not the guy that we found out and we heard that you were in your chat bragging that you lost five pounds and you're 415 pounds now. So when you can get to my weight, if that's you, then by all means, then start running your soup cooler. If not, I got nothing else to say for you, brother. You might need to be paying attention to these oils classes because there's oils that can help you so that way you can lose that weight and do it correctly. And that way your life doesn't get in danger. So you don't have to go spend a couple of, what, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on a surgery to make to help you get the discipline to lose that weight. You know, we are decent people. We're decent human beings. Leave us alone. But you know what? That's okay. Because you guys were beautiful tonight beautiful did exactly what we wanted you to you do. guys are just walking right into those jail cells you're walking right into those courtrooms and the rest of us are still going to be here on youtube sharing this information so thanks for coming thanks for making my numbers go all the way up into the 120s tonight that's the highest we've ever been on no no, no, but no, because it, our very one first of the higher ones. it's one of the higher ones. So thanks, thanks for that. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Appreciate the view. Thumbs down don't mean nothing. nothing. So have a nice day, everybody else. Um, be looking for messages Not and email emails from us via our protocol and. We will let you know what's going down for the next one. Thank you, everybody. Peace.